right, hello everyone. It is Miss Kepley here, and today we are going to talk about story elements and specifically how they interact. So, when authors write stories, they have certain components that they always put in there. Well, typically always. And we're going to look at those components, and those are our story elements. And then we are going to look at how they interact together. So, first, what is a story element? Basically, it's the pieces or parts of a story. And there's typically five main elements, characters, setting, plot, conflict, and theme. So before we get started, I want you to write down what you already know about character setting, plot, conflict, and theme. Take about three minutes. If you have someone around you, you can turn and talk to them. Or if you're alone, just pause this video and you can jot it down. What I know about characters, what I know about studying, etc. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and write down what you know, already know about these story elements. All right, so we are back. I'm going to show you um, what these story elements mean, and we can kind of check it with your definition to see what you already know and maybe what you need to add to it. So first, we have characters. Characters are basically those who play a role in the story. And as a reader, you need to focus on the character traits. I call it their personality, how they act. And usually, you will have, have to infer these things. So if we look at these little characters here, we have a dude walking and we can infer that he's probably not very happy about the other character trying to eat his French bread. Yeah, I wouldn't be happy either. It's kind of weird. All right, more about characters. We have protagonists is typically who we root for as a reader. And it's the character's life we have been given in our access to. But be careful, it's not always what we call the good guy. On the other hand, the flip side, we have an antagonist. And an antagonist is the character who stands in the way of the protagonist. And this character usually creates a conflict for the protagonist. And we're going to talk about conflict a little bit later. All right, so looking at the bottom down here, you can probably guess what we are getting ready to talk about, what story element, and that is, you can see the difference in each one is setting. Setting is where the story takes place. We, we probably already know that, but sometimes we forget it's also when the story takes place. Like, does it take place in the early 1800s? Or it, does it take place in the future, like this dude right here delivering pizza on, the, on a different planet? I don't know. So setting is not only where, but it's when the story takes place. Moving on to our next element, we have plot, and we could go into detail about this, but we're just going to do a general overview. Plot is the sequence of events in a story, and it's how the story develops, unfolds, and moves through time. A lot of times you have probably seen the plot diagram or a little map or something that explains what happens first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or exposition, rising action climax, falling action, and resolution. Basically, it's a sequence of events. All right next, we have conflict. And conflict is the major problems or complications the characters face. And there's usually some type of struggle going on with the character. And that struggle can be internal struggle or external struggle. It could be something they're going dealing with inside of themselves or with another person. So this drives the plot and makes the story more interesting. We always want to read about the drama, right? <laughs> okay, finally we have theme, and it's the unifying idea, lesson, or moral of the story. It's an underlying meaning that oftentimes needs to be inferred. Like the author's not going to come out and say, hey y'all, the theme is be good to your friends. No, you're going to have to figure it out based on the events and the conflict and the plot. So if you want to review these terms, there is a link in the description below. If not, we have one other thing that we need to look at. 
So these elements do not just take place by themselves. Oftentimes they interact with each other. So we need to analyze, as a, a great language arts student, you need to start analyzing the interaction of these elements. How do they work together? And so there's three steps to do that. First, you have to identify the story elements. You have to know the basics. Like, who are the characters? What is the setting? What is the plot? You have to know those basics first. Second, think. If one of the elements changes, how would that affect the rest of the elements? So, if the setting is no longer in the 1800s, but instead modern day, how would that change the story? Or, if the theme changed, how would that change the character's actions in the plot or the conflict? If the conflict was different, how would that change the character traits? It's kind of fun when you start thinking about all of your different what-if activities or what-if scenarios because if you change one little thing, it could change the whole story. And then finally, you're, you're going to determine the cause and effect relationship between the elements. And that is it. So first, look at your story elements and then see how they start to work together. Because of the setting, your characters might have a certain conflict. Or because of the conflict, there might be a certain theme. But if you change one of those things, everything else can change. How cool is that? So... We're going to take it up a level. We are not just looking at story elements anymore. We are looking how they interact. And if you would like more activities with story elements and specifically how they interact, please look down in the link below and click on those little links and it'll take you to all these great resources to help you out. That is it. I hope you have a great day. I hope you learned a little bit about story elements and how they interact. Bye.